Welcome back to Camera West TV. My name is Carlo, and today I'm going to take you guys through the basics of film scanning with the Negative Supply 35mm Pro Kit. As you can see, I have the Negative Supply Pro 35mm kit in front of me, but before we get into that, I'm going to go over some things that you need to get started. So first of all, you'll need a digital camera. Any type of digital camera will do, preferably a full frame sensor, but a crop sensor can also do the job. And next, you're going to need a macro lens, and that's going to allow you to get as close to the film as possible. Um, if I take this off right here, you can kind of see how well, you can kind of see how deep it goes, but essentially you will have the film visible and you're gonna try and fill your sensor or more or less the screen on the back of your camera with as much of the film as possible. Put this back. So the setup I have here today is the Leica SL2 along with the Sigma 105 f 2.8 DG DN macro lens. And this lens is part of the L-Mount Alliance which is perfect because it's a native mount for the Leica SL2. Um, the only other lens that I would maybe recommend is the 60 macro TL lens, but that is a crop sensor lens and you would be cropping into the sensor using that lens. So as I mentioned before, this is the Pro 35 millimeter kit. This kit is exclusive to Leica Store San Francisco. And as you can see, we have our Made in Wetzlar logo up here. We also have the engraving of the Made in Wetzlar logo there. We have these nice red accents along with the Made in Wetzlar camera logo. Gonna make sure that, there we go, centered. So yeah, this kit includes the Pro Riser Mark III. It's gonna be the Made in Wetzlar edition. And then we have the Pro Carrier 35, which is also the Made in Wetzlar edition. You also get the 35 millimeter full border scanning cassette, which allows you to pretty much scan the borders. So if you want that kind of look for your photos, or if you wanna see the information of the film stock, um, this allows you to do that. And then moving along, you do get the Pro 35 millimeter scanning hood, which allows to block off any excess light or stray light. So Pretty much later on in the video when I have this all dialed in, you'll pretty much see how close this camera will be to the film as we're scanning. And the last few pieces are the 4x5 basic light source, which is rated at a 99 CRI, which is recommended for you know scanning film to get pretty accurate colors. And to keep everything in place so it doesn't move around while you're scanning, there is the 35 millimeter adapter plate for the basic 4x5 light source. Um, it's pretty handy just because there are a lot of moving parts. This is essentially all connected, but obviously we can take it apart just like that. Boom. Put that back together. All right. So next, some secondary things that you're going to need is obviously film negatives. So right here I have the negatives from the Cinestill review video that we did. You can check that out right up here. Um, so this is just one of the rolls. Next, you're gonna need an SD card. I already popped it in here and formatted it. So we're ready to scan. And then obviously you're gonna need gloves for scanning. And these are just anti-static lint-free gloves. So when I'm handling my negatives, I'm not adding any additional dust or fuzz or static to them. And obviously we're gonna need a rocket blower. So keeps the dust away. I also forgot to mention that this kit is easily put together by this tool in the back. Um, I forgot what the name is, but it basically adjusts pretty much all the screws that you need to assemble this, which is perfect. And that just fits right back there. And lastly, you're gonna need a very sturdy table. So I have here a 
very sturdy table. The reason why is as long as you have a sturdy surface, that'll reduce your chances of bumping into the table or the surface and causing some motion blur. Um, these are gonna be relatively short, long exposures. So that's why you want something nice and sturdy and just a lot of room to work with. Some secondary things that you might need if your camera can't do self timer, uh, I recommend a cable release or if you can connect your camera to some sort of smart device like I can with my iPad, you can use the Leica Photos app to control the camera from there. Some other things are a leveler, just to make sure you know everything is straight and aligned properly. And lastly, if you don't wanna use an SD card, you can tether your camera to your computer and use Capture One, Lightroom, any of those capturing softwares in order to just directly import your photos to the camera, or to import your photos from the camera directly into your computer. Today, we're just gonna be doing the SD card for convenience, otherwise we would have too many cables out here. All right, so I'm gonna put on my gloves and we'll get going. Got my negatives, all 36 exposures. Pro tip, you wanna fold that little flap right there. If you do uncut negatives, then you just pull straight down and separate. Now I have my film. I'm just going to give it a little dust. And then we're gonna dust in here just to make sure we are free of any kind of excess dust. Also, I'm just using the standard 35 millimeter cassette. It doesn't show the borders, so if you'd like to see that in the future, um, let me know down in the comments. I can very well do a video on that. All right, so I have my film ready to go. So I try and place it in facing the camera so I don't have to invert it later. So once the film is in like so, I wanna make sure, oh, you can see that the knob is turning a little bit and you can see it coming out on the other end. All right. So now that I have the film ready to go, I'm just gonna kind of curl this like so, just so we're not hanging off the edge of the table. Oh my gosh, curly film. Also, if you do cut and sleeve your negatives, uh, it does work for cut negatives. So as long as it's long enough to pass through the carrier, you can scan it and it's flat enough to hold. Now let's get our camera dialed in, turning it on. Probably should have done this earlier. I'm sure you'll notice I have blue tape here. Uh, the blue tape is to make sure my light source is centered with the camera and I already scanned a couple things beforehand so I have everything dialed in and locked in but for you you might have to play around and see what works for your camera and setup. So far this works pretty well. So we have a knob right here and this allows the camera to move up or down. I don't know if you can see that on this one. So here I'm raising the camera ever so slightly which is nice. Um, think of it as a reverse enlarger, you know, instead of exposing directly onto paper, you're exposing upwards onto the sensor. And then we're going to take it over to the desktop and throw it into Film Lab Desktop. That is what Negative Supply recommends they use for converting their negatives. There's other programs like Negative Lab Pro, or you can invert your negatives manually. Um, so whatever you prefer, feel free to use. But for this demo, we're gonna be using Film Lab Desktop. All right, so I think we're getting closer. Oh, I think I passed the minimum focusing distance. Hold on one second. All right, so when I'm doing this, my goal is to fill as much of the screen which is roughly the size of the sensor with as much of the negative as possible. So I have this recording here and I'm, as you can see, I'm trying to fill as much of the frame as I can. So just like that. So I think that's the first frame. I'm just gonna line it up. There we go. All right, so that's the first frame. All right, so that's perfect. I have my frame set. So, now that I have everything pretty much ready to go and to scan, pretty much some basic settings that I have for the camera is I am shooting at ISO 100. Anything with a low ISO is preferable just because you want to eliminate as much noise from the camera as possible and bring out the natural film grain. Next, you want to be shooting at an aperture at F11 or higher or you know F8 works too. 
It's kind of like trying to make sure the entire plane of the film is in focus. And then next I have auto white balance set just because I do shoot in various lighting situations. So you just want to make sure that it's kind of auto detecting for those changes in lighting. Like I said, if you don't have a cable release or you don't have like a way to control the camera with a app or a device, two second self timer is perfect. You just press it and then let it shoot, then move the negative. And again and lastly we want to be shooting in raw that's the best way to get the most out of your negatives that way you can have as much flexibility and information in your files all right now that i have everything set we're gonna do a timer test i know that some people think scanning takes a long time but it doesn't and obviously when you have everything dialed in you can scan pretty quickly with this uh, beats sitting next to a flatbed, um, but if you do have kind of film grade scanners like a Naritsu or a Pac-On, this requires more manual labor than having to feed it through. Also, I forgot to mention for focus, it's probably best to leave it at manual focus, pretty much just lock focus. All right, so pretty much that should be in focus for all the shots. It shouldn't be changing because the focus plane is locked. So I have my timer right here. I'm gonna set that. And we're just going to start. And this is what I mean by there are slight long exposures. Um, so if you're kind of like me, I kind of like to be a little bit more precise with my film scanning. I just want to make sure I'm capturing with pretty even equal space all across. And then also you will sometimes come across photos where they are kind of a little difficult to see the edges of the frame. So just do your best to, you know, frame it how you need to frame it. And then you can always come back and rescan, which is the beauty of this whole setup. And I think over time you can develop some kind of muscle memory so you'll just be able to scan just as quick. Alright, looks like that's the end of the roll. Dope. I also forgot to mention that the film that I'm scanning is Cinestill 400D. So this will be interesting to see these results compared to a lab scan. And looks like that only took about three minutes and 46 seconds, which I will say is not bad, especially since, you know, we were being pretty careful and making sure every frame was within the sensor bounds and just making sure that we had, you know, everything that we need to capture. All right, so negatives put away. Let's turn this camera off. Um, now we're going to take our SD card. We're gonna pop it into our computer. All right, so I copied all the images from my SD card to the computer and I put it in a folder so it's easy for me to locate. So now we're going to click this folder button, which lets you hit open and see it'll populate that folder that I have. And here, we're just gonna click that and then hit open and you'll see all the images that we've shot uh, during the entire scan pop up. So now that those all have loaded, pretty much we can just pick one and kind of look at it for now. Let's use this one. This is a pretty good, pretty good image. So as you can see here, this is pretty much, you know, a raw negative. You just see everything inverted and right here you have the process so right now it shows color positive and then you have a couple of different sliders at the bottom the nice thing about this application is you can process slides color negative and black and white so right here you have all of those options so we're going to click color negative and boom right off the bat we have a really good looking scan and it actually almost looks better than the lab scan but no shade to underdog. So right here, you'll see underneath input calibration, you have standard, and they also have specific profiles for specific cameras. Um, since I am using a Leica camera, this is just 
registering a basic DNG file, but obviously they have corrections for Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, and Pentax. So we're gonna leave it on standard. And now we have the backlight options. So as you can see, it's already preset to incandescent D50. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I think that might be the color temperature for incandescent lighting. I could be wrong, let me know in the comments. So now we have a full menu right here. So pretty much we have a few to choose from. Incandescent, oh, I guess it says right there. Color temperature of 5000 Kelvin. You know, if you're using just a normal light, you can use these profiles to correct for the right color balance. So we have a CR95 and right here, we're gonna select negative supply CRI 99, which is what this light source is. I'm gonna click that. And yeah, that actually looks pretty good so far. And also along with this application, it gives you a couple slider options to edit your exposure. So the expose time is gonna make it darker. And then obviously you can make it brighter to get more information out of your shadows. You are able to export your files directly to your desktop or your PC or even your smart device because it is also an app. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick basic edit here. Maybe keep some of those shadows. Let's lower some of this contrast. Bring back some of that information. We're gonna add a couple points of yellow. And some magenta. So the sliders in this program aren't as um, sophisticated as other programs like Negative Lab Pro where you can get really intricate. But the beauty of this program is that it is not Lightroom dependent. So you don't need Lightroom Classic in order to run this program. So if you just wanted quick scans and you wanted to see how things are, and then later on convert it in Negative Lab Pro, uh, you can very well do that. It's whatever your preferred workflow is. All right, so we're gonna go back and let's say, you know, you wanna see everything and you just want a quick overview of what you've scanned and see how it looks. We will just revert this just like so. So we're gonna hit so we're just gonna select all of them. And then from there, you can hit process as, and it's just gonna go directly to color negative. Or you're gonna have to select color negative. And now we'll see it load and pretty much see all of our exposures slowly transform from negative to positive. Um, ever so slowly. I <laughs> also want to mention that this version of Film Lab desktop that I'm using is the 2.5 beta version. So I think there are still some kinks to work out. But when you click on one of these photos, they are converted. So if it looks like it's not converted, chances are it is. But as you can see, the default settings are whatever the standard matching is. And I think it reads whatever the file type is. And obviously the backlit default is the incandescent D50. Again, this looks pretty good. There's some dust. So the whole mindset with this entire setup is this isn't going to be the final product, even though you can have this be the final product. And there's nothing wrong with that. I do think with this, I would also recommend taking this into Photoshop, cleaning it up a bit. You know, there are some sensor spots from I guess I should have probably cleaned the sensor. Remember to clean your sensors. There's some dust, even though we tried to prevent some of that. But you know, those are just inevitable things when you work with film. Just like when you make a print, you're always gonna get dust or some speck somewhere. So in order to combat that, you need to edit those out. We'll go back to this right here. It reset the edits that I did earlier, but obviously, like I said, if you're just looking for a quick scan and you just wanna see what your film looks like and you don't want to pay however much it is for high quality film scans uh, this is a good alternative it is a bigger cost up front but also in the longer run you're only paying for film processing or if you even develop your own film at home you can cut down the cost significantly so yeah that's pretty much a quick rundown of using the negative supply setup along with film lab desktop i do think that they're both great options if you want to take film scanning into your own hands. And like I mentioned before, 
uh, feel free to use whatever workflow is within your means or you're comfortable with. Personally, I've come from a pack-on scanner and using this, it took me a little bit to figure out a comfortable workflow just because, you know, with a scanner like that or like a Naritsu or a Frontier, you just feed it in and, you know, all this leg work that we just did is taken out. So, you know, sometimes you just gotta enjoy the process and kind of go along for the ride. And that way you can understand what goes into your film scans. So the last thing too is you can export in whatever format you want. You can get a 16-bit TIFF file, 8-bit um, TIFF or 8-bit JPEG. Um, and then from there you would just hit export and then you know you can create a subfolder however your, your workflow is. I usually like to have a separate folder for my edits and from there I'll take that file into Photoshop or Lightroom and kind of work with it there and get it to a point where I'm happy with. And that's pretty much my workflow with editing my film photos. Also, before anyone says anything, all film photos are edited. So this wraps up this episode of Camera West TV. I want to thank AJ and the lovely folks over at Negative Supply for working and collaborating with us on this awesome setup. This kit is unique to Leica Store San Francisco and Camera West. You can't get it anywhere else unless it's through us. So thank you again for putting this together and making such an awesome all-in-one kit. And again, I would also like to extend thanks to Underdog Film Lab. They didn't process any new film, but this is the film that they processed for our Cinestill review video. So shout out to Underdog, definitely go check them out. Links for the negative supply and Made in Wetzlar stuff and the link for Film Lab desktop is going to be down below as well as links to Underdog Film Lab. Oh, also don't forget to check out the blog post, which is also in the link down below. We'll have a full gallery of what I just scanned against the lab scan, so you can see for yourself the difference. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think about negative supply, um, what your preferred way of scanning film is, whether you like to use a dedicated film scanner or a camera scan or phone scan. I know, right? Phone scan. You know, with this kind of technology becoming more accessible and film scanners becoming harder and harder to repair or even come by. I think this is a great option to scan your film at home without having to need old software or old tech. But also don't forget to support your local film lab. This is Carlo from Camera West TV and I'll see you next time.